This is Bishop Tom Brown. He runs Tom Brown Ministries at Word of Life Church in El Paso, Texas. Atheism doesn't have common sense. Atheists constantly write to me telling me that you cannot prove the existence of God, but the truth is you can. It's real simple. He was added to a Southern Poverty Law Center list of active anti-LGBT hate groups a while back, and I can absolutely see why. But the LGBT community isn't the only group he targets. He also has a deep problem with atheists, as it turns out. So I figured we'd take a look at some of his recent YouTube videos. Oh yeah, he has a YouTube channel with about 3,000 subbies. It's hours of endless entertainment. Let's get into it. Romans 1.20, Paul says, Ever since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal nature has been clearly seen by what he made. And then even our constitution says it is self-evident that the creator, in other words, it's self-evident that God exists. The Constitution doesn't say that. You're thinking of a completely unrelated document written 11 years earlier, the Declaration of Independence. But the funny thing is, even the Declaration of Independence doesn't say that. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that we have certain unalienable rights. It does say that the Creator endowed us with those rights, but it was a political document focusing on political values. The writers weren't professing their faith in God. They were professing their belief that people are equal and and have certain rights. 11 years later, when the Constitution was written, they decided on a secular government. That's why they specifically put a clause in the First Amendment called the Establishment Clause, which clearly defines the importance of keeping religion and politics separate. And if the Establishment Clause doesn't define it well enough for you, then you can read the letters between Thomas Jefferson and Danbury Church. They asked for clarification, and he went into excruciating detail about how he envisioned the First Amendment being implemented. The Constitution is vague and ambiguous in some parts, so we have a Supreme Court to decide what the Founding Fathers meant by this or that. No need for the Supreme Court's interpretation with the Establishment Clause. They already expanded on it themselves. A lot of people seem to think the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence were written at the exact same time by the exact same people. They weren't. As I said, they were 11 years apart. That's a time span that's almost three times longer than the Confederacy existed. I feel like it's ridiculous I even have to mention it, but here we are. Let's keep going. Going. So how is it that we know God exists? It's real simple. The universe had a beginning. And as long as you have a beginning, you must have someone outside of time who is eternal to make the universe. There is no other alternative. You basically said if there's a beginning, you must have somebody outside the universe to kickstart it. First of all, the concept of before or outside of when you're talking about the universe are nonsensical terms. There is no before or outside of because time and space are properties of the universe itself. Now, I get it. That kind of feels like a cop-out answer, but it's a scientific one. If that doesn't grab you, let me throw this at you. See if you can bat this around the old noggin. Why are you assigning personhood to whatever thing kickstarted it into existence? Why does it have to be an individual with a personality? The simplest explanation is usually the safest assumption. Not only are you assuming there was an individual outside the universe that made it all come into existence, rather than a natural phenomenon, which is the safest assumption, since we know nearly nothing about it, but you're also adding all these attributes on top of it. This individual that lives outside of space and time also cares about how you dress and what music you listen to. He knows everything, past, present, and future, which means he knew the first humans were going to sin before they did. Kind of weird he was wandering around the Garden of Eden looking for them if if he knows everything, including where they are. Kind of weird he created Satan if he knew he was going to betray him. Kind of weird he created snakes if he knew they were going to convince Eve to eat the apple. Kind of weird he sent himself to Earth to sacrifice himself to himself, to appease himself, for a mistake that was ultimately his fault in the first place. But he decided to blame humans for it. But go on, tell me how ridiculous it is for me to say, I don't know how we got here, rather than your explanation. This is why almost the entire world believes in God, or God of some sort. 
you'd realize how few atheists there are. Actually, that's not why the entire world believes in God or gods. It's because people are brainwashed by people like you when they were little kids. Get them young and you have them for life. You know that as well as everybody else. But he's bordering on something called the appeal to the majority logical fallacy. He gets into it a lot more later. He's arguing that this position is correct because a lot of people believe it. The majority of people believed owning slaves was okay in the 1700s, but here we are. It wasn't right then, and it's not right now. The main branch of the Mormon church, LDS, does the same thing. There are like a billion splinter groups, each one smaller than the last, but they all believe they have the truth. The biggest one, the one that practically runs the state of Utah, says, you know we have the truth and the splinter groups are wrong because we're the biggest. God has blessed us with high membership. The smaller ones say, correctly, the number of people who believe has nothing to do with how true it is. If that were the case, then you'd have to admit that Islam, with its 1.8 billion members, is more correct than Catholicism, with its 1.8 2 billion members. And Catholicism is more correct than evangelicalism. Why don't we just drop every belief we hold and go with what the majority believes? China has 1.4 billion people in it, and they call themselves a communist government. Majority's right, isn't it? So 350 million Americans should give up on capitalism and switch to communism because there are more people in China than there are in America. This is where the logic leads us, Tom. Is it clear yet, or should I keep going? You would realize how few atheists there are? Did you know? There are more flat earth believers than there are atheists. <laughs> That's right. There's more people who believe that the earth is flat than don't even believe in God. How do you, rash, how do you reason with a flat earth person? It, you can't. You can go and show them pictures. You can show them scientific discoveries. But it doesn't matter. They never accept any of the arguments. The same is true with atheists. This is getting into standards of evidence and burden of proof. What would it take to convince me that God actually did create the universe? The default and correct position is, I don't know, until you receive some hard evidence for it. That's the correct position for the flat earth claim too. Globeheads are making the claim, so globeheads have the burden of proof. They have to prove not that it isn't flat, because that's a positive claim too, but that it's a globular spheroid. The default position is, I don't know if it's round. Luckily, we have an absolute mountain of evidence to prove the earth is a ball rather than flat. We can run the test ourselves if we don't trust the big globe industry. Take a tall stick, bring it out to California, and measure the shadow at noon. Do the same thing in New York. Plant a stick in the ground and measure the shadow. Now, if you know the distance from New York to California, you can calculate the circumference of the earth. You don't have to rely on big airline or big telescope or big globe manufacturers to tell the truth. You can find the answer for yourself. Aside from the fact that you can get your own answer to this, the flat earth proposition itself is a positive claim. Like I said, the correct starting position is I don't know, but flat earthers are going a step beyond that into I do know it's flat, and make all kinds of crazy claims on top of that which are easily disproven. With Christianity, I'm actually willing to believe there's a god that kickstarted everything. That's a possibility, but there's no evidence for it. When we get some evidence one way or another, that's the way I'll go. I always go with the science. Interestingly, this video is supposed to be providing me with evidence of God's existence. So what's he said so far? His first argument was, it's self-evident, I just know it. Well, the flat earther says the same thing. I need a little more than that. The second argument was a logical fallacy. Most people believe it. That doesn't get us any closer to the truth. The third argument seems to be, you just won't accept the evidence. Well, give it to me. I've given you almost two minutes of my time so far, and I'm still no closer to accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I figured you'd come out of the gate with your best argument. I guess we're working up to it. When you f show them that the universe had a beginning, it was made, therefore if it was made, someone beyond time, space, and matter must have made it. There's the hang up. You say it was an individual with a personality that did it. I say we have no way of knowing if it was a person or not. I haven't ruled out the possibility of an alien species coming in and kickstarting it, or even a natural phenomenon. I've been waiting for you to tell me how you ruled that out when Stephen Hawking didn't even rule that out. And that dude arguably knew more about the early universe than anybody on the planet. If you have some secret information I don't have access to, then please lay it on me. But you know what atheists will tell me? Well, if God made the universe, where did God come from? And I'm thinking, they don't get it. 
God is eternal, people. Do you understand? He's eternal. He's not made by anyone. No, Tom. You don't get it. The point of that argument is to carry your logic to its conclusion. And instead of actually using logic, you're breaking the logic and inserting nonsense. The argument is a syllogism. A syllogism is a logically constructed argument with points and a conclusion. So the example that's always given when syllogisms are discussed has two points, also called premises, and a conclusion. Point number one, all mammals are animals. Is that true? Yes. Okay, point number two, all elephants are mammals. Is that one true? Yes, okay. Conclusion, elephants are mammals. The logical conclusion from these two points, which absolutely must follow from these points or premises, as long as each of them are true, is that elephants are animals. The idea that Tom Brown is sloppily trying to force feed us is a syllogism. It goes like this. Point number one, everything that begins to exist has a cause. Point two, the universe began to exist. Conclusion, the universe has a cause. I guess Tom is arguing that God didn't begin to exist, but Tom is committing a little error called a non sequitur fallacy. The conclusion doesn't necessarily follow from the premises. Here's another example. Premise one, all mammals are animals. Premise two, all elephants are mammals. Conclusion, saber-toothed tigers can't swim. There's a lot of data missing, it makes no sense, and there's no reason to draw that conclusion from the information you have. Specifically, my hang-up is with the definition of a cause. According to the cosmological argument, which is everything that begins to exist has a cause, and the universe began to exist, we just don't know what that cause was. Like I said, it could have been an alien race, or some natural phenomena. He didn't rule those out, he just jumped straight to, Jesus died for your sins. The logical leap he made really is as dramatic as the saber-toothed tiger example when you think about it. Let's watch the last section of this clip. He's not made by anyone. That's the whole point. Because if God was made by someone, then we have to ask who made that God. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. No, God is eternal. He's beyond time, space, and matter and doesn't need to be created. The fact that we have a creation, a universe, proves we have a creator so there's the argument. It's like he sloppily manhandled the cosmological argument and it shattered into a thousand pieces. There are some Christian thinkers out there who've thrown ideas at me that I really had to think about. I've spent days, weeks, thinking about it. The ideas he presented are garbage. It was a poor attempt at slipping extra premises into a syllogism, hoping his listeners wouldn't catch it. So let's summarize. The first argument he gave us was, I just know it's true. The second one was, lots of people believe it. The third argument was, you just won't believe me. The fourth the fourth and final argument was a piss poor misinterpretation of the cosmological argument. So there you go. I gave you three minutes of my life, Tom. You didn't get me any closer to God. But that's not the only one we've got. The last video is from April 23rd, 2022. Check out the next clip. This one's from April 6th, 2022. The title is Tom Brown Makes No Proper Grammar. I'm sorry, I misread that. It's Atheism Makes No Common Sense. That being an atheist and an agnostic makes no common sense. I'm sorry, I'm a grammar extremist. It's a problem. Before we continue, I want to mention something. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But you can also check out my Twitch or my Telltale Unfiltered channel. I've been streaming every Tuesday and Thursday from 11 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. And I play video games while debunking religious pastors and faith healers like this guy. That's right, he's a faith healer too. And you're not feeling it right now. No pain right now. That's better than a chiropractor, isn't it? Hallelujah. Who healed you? Jesus Christ is the healer of the church. Give the Lord a praise off. When I finish streaming, I upload the edited clips to my Telltale Unfiltered YouTube channel, so give it a watch if you're interested. This is Mario Murillo. Um, he is... God, I don't know how to even describe him. He's another self-proclaimed prophet of God. Got deep problems, this guy does. Mario Murillo. Why are his eyes, like, popping out of his head right now? This is kind of weird, right? Okay, let's keep watching. I don't understand. Why aren't you just getting to it, Mario? Just do it. All links are in the description, of course. Anyways, let's continue with Tom Brown's video, Atheism Makes No Common Sense. Atheism doesn't have common sense. You see, almost the entire world, more than 90% of the world believes in some form of deity or God that has made the world. 
less than 10% of the world's population is atheistic or agnostic. Do you realize that? Oh, here we go. Glad I already debunked this idea. It doesn't matter how many or how few people believe something. That has nothing to do with the truth value of the claim. But I do want to contest the numbers he's laying down here. He believes 10% of the world is atheist? Where is he getting his numbers? It really depends on your definitions. It's hard to get solid numbers on a worldwide scale because there are tribes in the jungle who've never communicated with the outside world before. And there are a ton of countries that explicitly banned religion for decades. There are still some out there. Just like there are countries that have state religions. So getting an accurate worldwide number isn't an easy task. But just taking the reported numbers and assuming they're correct, somewhere around 7% of the world actively believes that there is no God. Somewhere around 7% of the world claims to actively believe that there is no God. 15% of the world doesn't have some form of religious belief. But when you start looking at specific subsets of the population, like the United States for example, the data gives us a clearer and more accurate picture. Pew Research does a religious landscape study every seven years. The last one came out in 2015, so I think we're still waiting for the most recent. But other studies have been done more recently, and they show similar data to the last religious landscape study. PRRI did one in 2020, and it affirmed what the last Pew study showed, which is that religiously unaffiliated, which includes atheist, agnostic, and nothing in particular, makes up about 23% of the country. PRRI showed that white evangelical Protestants make up about 14% of the U.S. That's kind of interesting. Looks like non-believers are a bigger demographic than evangelicals. Seems like Tom has some soul-searching to do to come to the conclusion of the bigger group, which is, of course, the correct conclusion, if his logic is to be accepted. Let's keep watching. A very small percentage. Now, do you realize it's hard to get almost the entire world agreeing on anything when it comes to politics, social issues, morality? I mean, there's just, you know, 60, 40 percent, you know what I mean? And if it's 60, 40, then that's a big percentage, you know what I mean? That's like a landslide in an election. But when you have 90% or more believing in God or some form of God who made the world, then that ought to tell you something that being an atheist and an agnostic makes no common sense. Again, he's leaning on his majority is correct argument. And then at the end of the majority is correct argument, he says atheism makes no common sense, quote unquote. Love it. Love everything about it. How could you, if you're an atheist, say, well, I'm right and almost the entire world is wrong? That almost sounds like a conspiracy theorist. You know, you're always going to get a small percentage of doctors or lawyers, small percentage of ministers that's going to hold to some outlandish lie. We call it conspiracy theories. But that's what atheists and agnostics are doing. They're holding to a, an idea that hardly anyone accepts to be true. That's the thing, Tom. I'm not holding anything to be true. I'm waiting for you to provide evidence of the thing that you hold to be true. You didn't provide evidence in the first video, and here we are, halfway through the second video, with no evidence. Still, the only argument you provided in this one is, everybody thinks it's like this, so it must be true. Let's keep watching. And there is validity in common sense. Common sense is simply that. It means it is an, a knowledge in which most people agree to be true. And if you can't accept what most people agree to be true, then we really can't have debates or arguments. This is why common sense is an important uh, tool in debate. So you're saying when you have a debate with an atheist, you want to go into it with the presupposition that you're right? I'm really not sure how that's going to accomplish anything, but you do you, I suppose. Atheists and agnostics are rejecting what is common sense to the rest of the world. And that alone ought to show you how sus suspect their belief that God doesn't exist or that he's not likely to exist is such a fallacy. It shows you their error in their thinking. And it confirms what the Bible says, that a fool has said, not a smart person, a fool has said there's no God because it doesn't make any common sense. Based on this shit-eating grin he's wearing, I feel like he thinks he just checkmated every atheist in the world. But to be perfectly honest, I don't really feel checkmated. Truth be told, there's so much diversity of thought in the religious community that I don't even feel comfortable saying that everybody thinks it's true. Every religion has a different version of a creation myth. They all have different ideas of what God is like and how he wants you to live, and some don't even believe that God created us. Some think God created us and walked away. Some think there's an afterlife. Some think it's just lights out. Some religions 
Christians are waiting for a spaceship to pick them up to take them to heaven. Some are praying at altars to raise their loved ones to a higher level in heaven. You know why there's so much diversity of thought? Because it's all made up. Everyone has their own ideas because nobody knows anything for sure. There is no evidence. If there were, you would have just busted it out in the first 30 seconds of video number one. Now, if you want to believe this without evidence, that's fine. I have no problem with that. In fact, if you fit that description, I hope you'll work with me to bring an end to extremism. I know a lot of very religious people who don't hate anybody for anything. They have deep problems with how people like Tom Brown treat atheists, or even the LGBT community. Interestingly enough, in the beginning of this video he did on the LGBT community, he seems to knock down the arguments he gave in the previous videos we watched. If someone tells you a lie, does it become the truth because someone told it to you? You would say, well, of course not. Well, what if, though, the president told you a lie? Does a lie become the truth? What if a Supreme Court justice tells you a lie? Does it become the truth? What if the media tells you a lie? Does it become a truth? It doesn't matter who in the world tells you a lie. If it's a lie, it's still a lie. Well, I cannot think of something that, has, uh, that people have been lying more about than the subject of homosexuality and same-sex marriage. That's correct. It doesn't matter who tells a lie. It's still a lie. Are you telling me I spent the last 15 minutes trying to communicate that and you already understood it? Keep watching. Uh, somebody might say to me, well, I know, Bishop, you know, you're a minister and the reason why you oppose homosexuality or same-sex marriage is because the Bible says so. Well, no, no, no. I oppose it because it's not true. It is not a, a, a truth based on everything that we use to define what truth is. Uh, and yes, the scriptures obviously are against homosexuality, and it doesn't obviously even mention same-sex marriage because it didn't exist. But it's, we don't oppose homosexuality solely because of the scriptures. We oppose it because it's not according to truth. That's not even where the video goes off the rails. If you want to see more, I actually covered the entire video on Twitch. It just released on my Telltale Unfiltered channel if you want to give it a watch over there. Link's in the description. Anyways, as I was saying, there are Christians out there who have deep problems with how this guy treats anybody who thinks differently from him, just like I do. My goal is to bring an end to Christian nationalism, and that is absolutely impossible without everybody's help, including active Christians. So if you're a Christian and you're watching this, I hope you stick around. We both want the same things. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Thanks for watching, guys.